friends welcome to our channel so in the previous sessions we have discussed the various concepts of c programming so in the, in those concepts mainly we have seen the order and execution of c program so that means how many files will be generated after successful execution of any c program and then we have seen the difference between the variables and a constant and what is a variable and then keywords the different keywords used in a in our c language and the input and output functions that is printf function and scanf function so once and also data types once we recollect all those concepts in a brief that the input and output functions are the name itself indicates the input function is used to take the input from the keyboard and the output function is used to display the output on the monitor and coming to the keywords there are mainly 32 keywords and each each one is having a specific task given by the compiler and a variable is a alternate name for memory location so we can simply say that variable is a memory location and this memory location it is difficult to remember the address of memory location for that purpose we are giving a name to that memory location and we are calling them as variables and we have also seen a different rules to be followed while writing the variable name so before writing the logic itself we need to give the instruction to the compiler that regarding the variables so before writing the logic itself we have to declare all the variables which we are using in the program and now in today's session let us learn various operators now what is an operator so an operator is a symbol which is having a specific task and which can be performed on the values inside the variable that means inside the memory location simply we can say it is a special symbol which can be applied on the variables it may be two variables in between the two variables or an individual single variable so depends upon the operator we need to perform the task so in those operators there are different operators in our c program so in today's session let us have a look on arithmetic operators arithmetic operators uh, as we all know these arithmetic operators we will see in our uh, regular calculator also the main arithmetic operators are five arithmetic operators are there that is addition simple addition simple subtraction multiplication See here in our C program, multiplication can be denoted as star. Division and one more operator called modulo operator. One more operator called modulo operator. So all these five can be treated as arithmetic operators. So these operators can be used to perform the arithmetic operations. So for performing the addition, we require two variables, minimum of two variables. Even subtraction requires two variables. Even multiplication requires two variables. Division requires two variables. And also the modulo requires two variables that means a plus b so if a and b are variables different variables a plus b similarly a minus 
B. A star B. A divided by B. A modulo B. Right? So, these are the five operators. This one will be the new, somewhat new for the users. So, let us have a look on modulo and division operators. As we know this addition, subtraction and multiplication, there are some constraints while performing the division and modulo operators. First coming to the modulo operator, modulo operator. So this modulo operator will use the remainder as a result. Reminder by performing the division, the reminder will be given as reminder as result. Example if A is equal to 5 and B is equal to some 2, then A modulo B means 5 modulo 2. That means divided by 5 with 2, the so 2 2s are 4 and the remainder is 1. So, the A divided by B is equal to the answer will be 1. So, the remainder, so A is divided by 2 and the remainder will be the result of modulo operator. Similarly, if we consider one more example, some 10 and some 5, a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 5, a mod b is 10 mod 5, 10 is divided by, by 5, 5 twos are 10, 0, so the output is a reminder, so here the output is a mod b is 0. And one more example, let us consider. 5 and 7. A is equal to 5 and B is equal to 7. Now A mod B, that means 5 mod 7. So here the 5 must be divided by 7. So here 5 is less than 7, so 0 times 0, the remainder will be 5. The answer will be A mod B is equal to that means if a mod b if a is less than b then obviously the result will be a so the main thing is after performing the division the remainder will be result in modulo operator and coming to the division operator the quotient will be the result so similarly, if, if division operator, if you consider the division operator, if 5 divided by 2, the same operation will be performed, 2, 5 divided by 2, 2, 2 is 4, here 4, 1, 0, 0. So this will be the result for division operator, quotient, quotient will be the result for the division operator. Remainder will be the result for modulo operators. There is a, a little bit difference between division and modulo. And as you may know that addition, subtraction and multiplication. There are no more constraints for these three operators. Now, what type of data can be performed for in between these operators, for these operators. So, coming to the addition. Addition can be performed in between two variables which are of integer data type or float data type. So, in between any type of data, the addition can be performed. That means both. Both are applicable. Subtraction. Here also both integer and float values can be applicable for 
subtraction. Next, multiplication. Here also, both the integer and float can be applied. Next, division. Here, there is a constraint. That means, here also we can perform both the integer and the float values. But in order to get the accurate result, the either numerator or denominator must be in a float value because let us see an example a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 2 a divided by b that means 5 right so here 5 divided by 2 Obviously, we must get the result as 2.5, but we will not get the result 2.5 because here the numerator and denominator are integer variables, integer data. So, if both numerator and denominator are integers, the result will be inaccurate. That means, it will give the result as 2, which is inaccurate. So, if, if numerator and denominator both are in integer data, then it will give an output also as an integer value. So, for getting the accurate result, in order to get the accurate result, the numerator or denominator must be a floating variable. So, that is the constraint we need to follow while performing the division operation. That means 5 divided by 2.0. Here 5 is an integer data, 2.0 is a real, that means a floating data. It will give 2.5. This perfect result, accurate result. So the result may be inaccurate. So always the result will not be inaccurate because if a is equal to 4 and b is equal to 2, obviously the result will be integer. Right? So, the result may be inaccurate for all type of data if both the numerator and denominator are integers. So, that is why we need to follow the constraint that is either numerator or denominator must be an float value in order to perform the division operator. either numerator or denominator must be float value. That is a constraint we need to follow to get the accurate results. And coming to this modulo operator, only integer values can be performed this module operator. So, in order to perform the module operator, this can be performed only in between the integers. So, floating values will not be accepted for performing this module operator. All these five operators are arithmetic operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and modulo. So, a little bit difference between the division and modulo operator. So, a division operator, the result will be the quotient and modulo operator, the remainder will be the quotient. And the constraint is either numerator or denominator must be float to get the accurate result in division operator. Hope you understood these arithmetic operators. Let us stop here and in the next session, we will discuss the another type of operators. Thank you.